Hello, everyone. I want to talk about this limit today, and we are going to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit instead of using the factoring technique to evaluate this limit. So let's look at this rational function here. We have x squared plus 3x minus 10, and then we have x squared minus 4. And usually the way that we do it is to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and then uh, to cancel all the factors that are causing the indeterminate form, and then we can do a direct substitution, and then we can find the answer. But this time, we actually want to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. So we don't even need to worry about the factoring. All we need to know is to know how to take derivatives. So let's try this problem here. Um, before we actually apply L'Hopital's rule, we actually need to make sure that, OK, so we have uh, 0 over 0 as an indeterminate form, or infinity over infinity as an in indeterminate form, so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So other indeterminate forms or non-indeterminate forms we re we cannot really use the L'Hopital's rule. So we cannot blindly just apply or take derivatives for the top and the bottom separately, OK? And so let's just do a quick check by direct substitution. OK, so what happened is that the numerator is having this form of something square plus 3 times something and then minus 10. And then the denominator is having a form of something square minus 4. and so what we really um, need to check is to just plug in the 2 and then check the calculation here. Now, see what's going on here? We have uh, 2 squared, which is uh, 4. So this gives you the 4. And then the 3 times 2 will give you the 6. And then you're adding the 6, right? So you're adding the 6 to the 4. And then so you get 4 plus 6 and then minus 10. So of course, as you can see, that we are getting 0 in the numerator. OK, now what about the bottom? The bottom can be quite obvious. We have 2 squared, which is 4, 4 minus 4, we get 0. So we are having a 0 over 0 in the turn of form. So this tells you that, OK, so after checking this, it tells you that you can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. Let's apply L'Hopital's rule. OK, so when you apply L'Hopital's rule here, usually on top of the equal sign, I would just simply indicate, OK, so I'm applying L'Hopital's rule here. So I'm just going to put this to indicate that, OK, so this step represents the process of using applying the L'Hopital's rule. OK, so uh, what are we doing here? We are going to take derivatives. Now, since this is a fraction here, sometimes people will just get confused and then we'll start doing the quotient rule, but do not use the quotient rule when you are taking the derivative. We need to take the derivative at the top and the, take the derivative of the bottom separately. And so what we are getting is that the numerator will give us, if you take the derivative of x squared and then 3x and then 10, right? So the x squared will give you the 2x. And then if you take the derivative of the positive 3x, it will give us the positive 3. And then when you differentiate the negative 10, we will, we'll get 0. So you get nothing here. Um, I'm not going to write it here, but just so you know that when you differentiate a constant, you are going to get zero. Now, what about the denominator? The denominator will give you, if you take the derivative of the x squared, it will give you 2x. And then uh, what do we get here from the negative 4? We are going to differentiate the negative 4 and will give us 0. So I'm not going to write it so you know it's 0. So actually, we can move the 2x in more so that it looks better with the more center. I think the fraction line looks too long, so let me make sure that my solution looks better. OK, so that's good. And at this point, don't just keep differentiating the top and the bottom. You actually need to check again to make sure that it's in determinate form so that if you really want to apply L'Hopital's rule again, or actually, you, it's not whether you want to apply it. You, it's it's about whether you need to apply it, right? So we need to check to make sure that we can apply or we don't have to apply. OK, so doing a quick check with the direct substitution. OK, so actually, uh, it's what? It's 2 times something plus 3. And then the denominator now becomes, what, 2 times something. And what is that something here? That something will just be, just be the, um, if you're playing 2 in there. OK, so you see that. You see that we actually don't get, don't really get uh, zero over zero. 
as you can see. It's it's not getting zero over zero here, so we cannot apply L'Hopital's rule here. But actually, it turns out that you can just directly substitute right now to find the limit. So let's do that. It's actually quite simple now. So we have what two times something plus three, and then over and then two times something, and then that's something you can now substitute the stuff in there. So we are going to just substitute the two in there, and then we have what? Let's calculate. We have two times two is four, four plus three is seven, so you put the seven at the top. What about the number at the bottom? It's two times two. This two looks a little bit too ugly. Let me just, just rewrite that one more time. Okay, so we get the uh, two times two is four, so our answer is seven over four. That's our limit for this. <clears throat> That's this uh, what this function is approaching to when x is approaching to. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Now I want to talk about another problem that looks really similar to this one, except that they're actually different. So what is that problem? I actually just make one change on this limit problem, and then I change it to an entirely different problem. But we are still going to use L'Hopital's rule to do it. So let's look at that problem. So you can see that I actually use the same function, except that this time x is not approaching 2 anymore, it's approaching infinity. And so this time is different. And we actually will just analyze this function one more time by direct substitution. Um, you cannot really substitute the infinity because that's not an actual number in there, but we can analyze the, uh, the behavior of the function and see what's going on when we do that. So let's just do it like, how we do it in the previous problem. Okay, so we have something square minus four. And now, um, pretend that we, we can actually consider that infinity in there. Okay, so we have infinity, infinity, infinity here. So let's think about this. As you can see, the numerator is approaching infinity because you're infinity adding infinity and then subtracting 10. So we are having the top approaching infinity here. What about the bottom? The bottom is also approaching infinity because you're squaring it and then you just take away the four from it, right? So you get infinity over infinity. That's another indeterminate form. It's, act it's actually not the same in the indeterminate form as the previous problem, but it's also another indeterminate form that will allow you to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that here. Okay, so we can now apply L'Hopital's rule. And again, I just, just make a note here to indicate that I'm using L'Hopital's rule for this problem. Okay, so we actually have done it before in the previous problem, so we can simply just write on the answer really quickly. Uh, the derivative of the numerator is 2x plus 3, and then the denominator of the bottom, I mean the derivative of the bottom is what, 2x? So we just get 2x plus 3. <clears throat> and now we got to do a quick check one more time. And, it, and the function now has the form. It looks like this. So as you can see here, the numerator again, it's approaching infinity. And the denominator, again, it's also approaching infinity. So that's another indeterminate form. <coughs> so we can, <coughs> we can now apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. Okay, let's apply it the second time. And so what is the derivative? What is the derivative of the top? It's just two. What about the derivative at the bottom? It's also two. So now as you can see, there is no more x in the function. You have to, your limit, which is equal to one. So that's it for this problem. As you can see, the two answers are really different, but the process are similar. And I only make one change. For the first example, the x is approaching 2, which will cause it in the terminal form of 0 over 0. But for the second example here, x is approaching infinity, and that will cause an indeterminate form of 
uh, infinity over infinity, and we are getting different answers. So make sure um, you check the form before you apply the low p-tiles rule. So as you can see here, we cannot apply it the second time here because it's not in the determinate form anymore. But for the second problem, we can see that there is another in the determinate form here that we can apply one more time. Okay, so that's it. I put these two examples together because I wanna want you to see the difference between the two. And it's actually, um, it's actually nice to see that, okay, so uh, we have two different forms that we can use low p-tiles rule. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.